Shalom lekulam. I'm Rona Lishimon, coming to you live from the one and only state of Israel on our 75th birthday. You might know me from Fauda, but truly, the soldiers of IDF are the real reason why we're here today. And I'm thrilled to be celebrating Israel's 75th Independence Day with friends of the IDF and all of you at home. I can't imagine a better way to celebrate this truly historic moment than with FIDF that for decades have provided crucial support to the courageous men and women of the Israel Defense Forces. We may not physically be together, but all Israel lovers worldwide stand united today, celebrating this incredible moment in time. Here in Israel, we're coming out of Yom HaZikaron, Israel's Memorial Day, recognizing those who sacrificed their lives, protecting and defending the state of Israel. We thank them for helping us to reach this day. For 75 years, Israel has stood as a thriving democracy, a center of innovation and uplifting the world through every field imaginable, through technology, medicine, and of course, the arts. Who would have thought that in such a short time, the small nation of Israel would lead on so many levels? I know all of you at home wish you were here with us today. So get your passport ready. Let's capture the spirit of Israel's 75th and go on a musical journey across Israel with the IDF. Here we go. Thank you so much. That was incredible. We are truly living the dream of thousands of years. 
If only David Ben-Gurion, one of our greatest leaders and founders of Israel, were here to see all of this. As he famously said, in Israel, in order to be a realist, you must believe in miracles. And indeed, the very existence of the state of Israel is a miracle, born out of the determination of many visionaries with a dream to give the Jewish people a forever home. But Ben-Gurion was not just a visionary leader. He was also a man of action. He founded the IDF, recognizing that we must be strong, never complacent, and promise Israel to future generations. To really appreciate how far Israel has come over these 75 years, we are so fortunate to have here with us Saba Micha, a Holocaust survivor, an IDF Navy veteran, and his grandson, Captain Itai, who currently serves in Israel's Navy. Let's learn more about our story. I'm Itai, a ship's captain in the Israeli Navy and commander of advanced training program of future commanders of the Israeli Navy. We make them more prepared for the challenges of tomorrow in leadership and operational tension in Gaza Strip, Lebanon, and Eilat region. In our program, we train the deputies commanders of patrol battleships, the chief engineers, the skipper tagboats commanders, and small border patrol commanders. We make them the best leaders they ever could be. My greatest inspiration to join the Israeli Navy is my grandfather, 84 years old, Saba Mika, a veteran of the Israeli Navy, and he's the main reason why I wanted so much to join the Naval Academy and become a ship's captain. I was born in a small town called Berz in Moldova of today, in 38. In 41, the Germans occupied the territory and we were deported to uh, Transnistria, the concentration camp. I lost my mother in the concentration camp and only my father and me were left. Major Mihail Menor dedicated more than 12 years to serving his country as a naval officer. During his time in service, he played a leading role in developing the technological capabilities of the Israeli Navy. The first war that I participated was uh, the Six Days War. In Yom Kippur War, I was uh, already retired, but they took me back to service and I was in charge as an electronic engineer for all the Sinai occupied by IDF. I left Europe and came to Israel almost without nothing. After nine years, even less, I was sent back to Europe as representative of the Navy of Israel, what is uh, very special for me. Saba is very modest. He took part in dozens of operations and upon retiring from the Israeli Navy, continued working in Israeli defense industries and received prizes that we cannot discuss. My grandfather's generation helped build the IDF. Now it's our turn, our responsibility and our shift to keep Israel safe and the IDF as strong as we possibly can. Looking at Saba, I promise to myself that the Holocaust will never happen again, and the IDF will stay strong. I'm very proud of you, my dear Itai. Your story is so emotional and inspiring, and I have to say it's such an honor to sit here with both of you. You really truly embody all that is good about Israel. So thank you so much for coming here and sharing your story with us. So, Seba Mika, if I may call you that myself. Thank you. Um, you witnessed Israel evolve throughout so many years. Um, you fought in Israel's wars and took part in so many operations. Did you ever imagine as a young boy in the Holocaust that one day there will be a state and it'll have an army to protect it? When I was liberated from uh, the concentration camp, I was six, 
five years old. I lost my mother there. It was very hard to imagine that one day we'll have such a beautiful country, a wonderful country, where uh, I had a very, very meaningful life. I uh, was 12 years in the Navy, as, uh, in, and uh, I'm very proud that Itai, my first grand grandson, is, Itai is uh, your first? Following the first one. I have eight. Wow. <laughs> the first one, and he's following my steps. I uh, participated in uh, many uh, operations, and uh, even after I finished my uh, uh, service in the Navy, I continued to work in, uh, the, the, in the defense industry. That's incredible. That's so inspiring that you kept finding ways to give and give and give. And it's a generational thing because you keep giving as well. And it's incredible to see your special connection. It feels like you have a very strong connection. This is true dole le dole action. And both of you serving in the IDF's Navy, sharing a life's work and continuing the same mission. So Captain Itai, will you explain what uh, dole le dole means to you? For me, ever since I was young, I've heard all my grandfather's Sabomika's stories about the Navy, about Israel, about his time in the Holocaust, about how he survived. And for me, from do to do, mi do le do, is to serve, is to know that this is my time, this is my generation's shift to protect, to make sure that nothing, nothing like what happened to my Saba will ever happen again. And this is why I felt so eager to become an officer, to command, to command people and lead the sheep in the Israeli Navy. And it feels amazing for me to close the cycle, to keep the heritage in the family, to be in the Navy. It is an amazing feeling. You must be so proud of what you've created. You've I'm done very proud. beautiful work, both to this country and to your family. And it's so inspiring, I have to say. Thank you so much for sharing your beautiful insights with us. But before we finish, because I could sit here all day and talk to both of you, um, I wanted to ask you, Saba, what is your, if you have a message to this future generation of this country, what would it be? You have a very, a wonderful country. We built a uh, beautiful and strong country. And what I wish that you will have a meaningful life, enjoy your life in, in this wonderful country, develop it and uh, defend and keep it strong and beautiful as it is. Thank you so much for being here. I feel honored to, to share this time with you. Dole Dole is an essential part of what has led the Jewish people to this incredible milestone. And that important value shows up in so many beautiful ways. Joining us now all the way from Los Angeles, California, is one of FIDF's most passionate supporters, FIDF National Chairman Fred Gluckman. Happy Israel's birthday, Fred! Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here with us. We are so happy to have you. Now, the way I understand it, you've been involved with FIDF for over a decade, and now you are the national chairman, so kola kavod lecha. Um, can you please explain why FIDF has become such a huge part of your life? Absolutely. Look, it's a frightening simplicity. The courage of everybody who serves and protects and defends our homeland makes this dream that we've had for millennia a reality today in our time. Obviously, it's far too late that it's become a reality, but that we are able to live and flourish around the world as a whole Jewish community rests entirely, entirely on the soldiers and the blanket of protection that those who courageously serve provide. Hmm. It sure is. That's why I want to call our viewers today to take action and support the IDF soldiers through FIDF. 
We've talked a lot about generations today on Israel's 75th birthday. Can you share what Dola Dola means to you? Absolutely. Dola Dola is, as we just said, it's taken us millennia to have the reality today. It is our job to protect it into the future. For our family in particular, this has become finally personal with our daughter being in Israel right now studying in Tel Aviv. We now have this opportunity to physically create a new generation in Israel from ourselves. And that is really our task. Our task as an FIDF community is to pass on this inspiration to the next generation so that we can provide health, welfare, and education to create equitable opportunity for all who serve and protect the nation and who all, all who will come after us in future generations as a community, as one FIDF. Definitely. Thank you so, so much, Fred. You definitely inspired us. All of us here in Israel feel your love and are so grateful to have friends around the world just like you. Happy Yom Ha'atzma'ut and thank you so much again. One of the values that Israel is most known for is its commitment to saving lives, not just in Israel, but around the globe. Israel's soldiers have traveled worldwide to offer emergency rescues and medical assistance, regardless of political or religious affiliations to disaster-stricken countries. Let's check out the short video showing Israel's search and rescue unit working around the clock to save lives in times of need. Joining us now are Dr. Captain Inbal of the Search and Rescue Brigade and Sergeant Rada of the FIDF's Educational and Youth Corps. They each supported IDF humanitarian aid missions during their service. Dr. Captain Inbal, you are the head doctor in the Search and Rescue Brigade and recently joined the Olive Branches, humanitarian aid missions to Turkey after its devastating earthquakes. Can you please share with us how it felt for you to be there? So we arrived to Turkey and saw a huge amount of destruction. I think more than 600 buildings were ruined at the city that we were operating on. Um, and we came to save lives. So I felt, as a doctor, honored to be part of this mission, to be a part uh, uh, of, the, of the medical corps there. Yeah. And um, I felt lucky. There were many delegations there from all over the world, correct? Yes. How did it feel to be there with the Israeli delegation? So at first we were like, we arrived to the site with hesitation, with the Israeli flag on our, uh, on our arms, and the Turkish people look at, looked at us with hesitation. Mm. But then when they figured we saved 19 souls, we saved 19 citizens, um, Which you know, is almost was, half of what was saved in it was, general. Yeah, 53% um, of the civilians that were saved with the uh, Israel uh, delegations. Um, so we had, like, we had stories about people that we saved. So when time passed, people were looking at us with hope. Yeah. Just with hope. And so it was, it was time that built the trust yes. between you and the civilians there. Time and, and people. Yeah. People talk, people see. Uh, their, and the way they succeeded. Yeah, their family member taken out from the rubber pile with the, you know, with a team that practiced with the same rubber pile days and night. You know, we were one of the only teams that worked at night because we wanted to hear the sounds of the civilians under the pile. 
So uh, people figured that we have, we have capabilities that others don't and just looked at us with hope. And you were there for a week and a half? A week and a half. So you haven't slept? I haven't slept. It was cold. It was minus six uh, Celsius degrees at night. Yeah. Um, but I really, I really didn't feel it. I was, you know, I was working. I had my mission. I had my team. Yeah. I was always checking my medical equipment, always checking all uh, uh, the search and rescue equipment. equipment. That's very inspiring. It's so amazing to see that, you know, the IDF is not only essential here in this country, but also is helping all around the world. Yes, and especially definitely. in a place like Turkey that we were able to help. And I'm sure it gives you so much pride. Definitely. And I'm proud of you. And I'm very happy. Thank you. And I feel lucky to have you. Thank so you. Thank you so much. I want to ask you, how did the locals react to seeing you in your Israeli uniform with the Israeli flag on your uniform? So I, I must say that I felt proud during all the delegation there in Turkey. At first, uh, the civilians looked at us with hesitation. And then when time passed and they figured we were saving souls, you know, my team saved a two years old boy from the pile that the Turkish team could like ask us to help uh, save, to save. Um, people heard about all the civilians we saved and then just looked at us with hope and called us around to save their families. I'm really glad you said that. And I was wondering if you, Sergeant Rada, had similar experiences when you helped IDF give aid to Ukrainian refugees fleeing the war zone. Yes, so at the beginning of the war in Ukraine, it started last year, uh, February 24th. Um, a lot of people from Ukraine had to leave their homes and they, a lot of them also came to Israel seeking shelter. And when they came here, uh, the government offered them um, to stay in some of the hotels all over Israel. And so I was sent to one of them in Netanya to help the people um, to, um, to feel, you know, welcome, to feel at home. And uh, we would uh, come every day and we would teach them Hebrew and we would stay with their children when the parents needed some time to do the paperwork and we would also help with the paperwork. And so we would do everything to make them feel as much um, home and as welcomed as they could. That's amazing. I remember those days very, very well. We were all taking part in our own way to make them feel a little bit more at home. And I'm so happy to hear that story. That was what we call in Hebrew, as human beings. We have a mutual responsibility to help each other. Sergeant Rada, can you share with us a moment, if you remember, of that you felt? Yes, so at the beginning, when we started working, working with the people and when we started our process, um, they couldn't really trust us because, uh, you know, there, were, there was a lot of uncertainty and stress they, that they were experiencing. And also, you know, they saw the uniform, the IDF uniform, and, you know, it reminded them in some way of the uniform that the Russian soldiers would wear and the soldiers that made, the, made them leave their homes, that destroyed their homes. And so that would make them feel some negative emotions. And so they couldn't trust us very easily. And so we would, you know, try to communicate and some, uh, sometimes ask for their, you know, names to just know who we work with. And they would ask us, why do you need our, you know, information? Mm. Why do you need our names? Yeah. Why? And they couldn't really talk to us because they you know, um, they were afraid. Yeah. And so I can say proudly that at the uh, end of the two months that we were with the people, um, a, lot of, a lot of them, you know, um, felt a lot more comfortable with us. And I have a lot of addresses in my phone of people who would leave the hotel and they would give me the, their address and tell me that if I ever need something and, you know, if I ever need their help to come and, and um, they would help us help them and they would trust us and they would be believe in, 
you know, some good in people. That's incredible. You know, I hear both of you and I can't not think about how humane the IDF really is. Both what you both did, you as a doctor in a war zone and you accepting refugees from war zones, it's different work, but it both work requires such a deep level of humanity and humility and kindness and I have to say that I'm very inspired by both of you. And just call a kavod for your work. And thank you. It has been my privilege to spend this day with all of you in honor of our beloved Israel. It wouldn't be a true Sabra celebration without some amazing music. So I want to see you all dance with me to celebrate Israel's 75th. Happy birthday, beautiful Israel. Am Yisrael Chai. Shlal gvanim ve'or shamayim 
הצובעים את העולם ויפה הוא שבעתיים ומחייך לכולם עולה עולה לשיר ביחד שהשמחה בלב פורחת עולה עולה לשיר ביחד גדול וקטן כמו קשר בענן Tell me the storm is gone forever Tell me there's no thunder in tonight צפוי ברשות נתונה 